Welcome back. We're going to continue with forecasting financial statements. In this video, we're going to look at how do we project operating assets and liabilities. Uh, there are a lot of factors to take into account. So first, we have to determine the underlying operating activities. So we are talking about um, making sure that we are internally consistent. So we need to know the operating strategy of the firm that is consistent with the operating expenses that we forecasted. So for some kind of assets such as inventory and property planning equipment, as the growth will lead sales growth, meaning that we have to stock up in inventory, we have to purchase the necessary equipment before we can generate the sales. Uh, other types of assets such as accounts receivable will lack sales because we create accounts receivable after sales occur. And then uh, other liabilities, we mentioned that uh, such as accounts payable uh, due to inventory purchases, they, will, um, they are automatically generated. And then, um, and those are determined by operating asset, which is inventory. And then other will be determined by um, operating expenses, um, such as accrued expenses. So when we project future operating assets and liabilities, um, we can either we can either tie them to um, revenue, uh, expenses, operating assets, and also we can use past growth to um, to forecast future growth. Uh, if you know that the firm is going to change, um, for example, a firm that is currently generating a lot of cash sales, but want to um, switch to more commercial customers. So from a primarily B2C to a B2B uh, business model, it will likely that they will, they will create more accounts receivables. So that's, a, that's an example of a change in a firm's strategy. Uh, so depending on the industry, once again, um, the forecast technique um, are oftentimes very industry specific. So let's say if you are a retail store, inventory is a very important part of your asset and you need to stock a certain amount of inventory per store. So the number of stores would be a, uh, a good unit of forecast. And then prepaid expenses um, and other current assets typically will vary with sales. When forecasting fixed assets, um, pep, uh, property, plant, and equipment, they will uh, some of these will be a very uh, large portion of total asset for some firm. So for a retail store, inventory will be a big portion of total asset. For a manufacturing firm. For example, a car manufacturer, the, um, those are very capital intensive companies. Um, and therefore, we, we need to uh, spend more time um, forecasting those. So in addition to those, we uh, other uh, types of operating asset and liability includes lease, which is a very common uh, form of financing. Um, lease expense is interesting because it has uh, an asset component, which is the right of use, and also um, uh, a, a liability component, which is um, the um, interest expense or as well as future lease obligations. Uh, Goodwill is typically generated when a firm acquire another company. Um, and whether or not that, and that that will recur depends on the firm's strategy. So again, you have to read the, the nooks in the company's uh, uh, financial statement and also in the management discussion and anal analysis section of the annual report where they may um, where they would oftentimes disclose what their growth strategy is, whether it's growth through organically, internally, or through acquisition. Other unique items include uh, forecasting in, uh, inventory balance, 
um, and that and that again will automatically affect your accounts payable. Uh, income tax payable and deferred income tax liability. Um, typically, those will grow with income tax, um, and again, they will, should be proportional. Um, and this, remember, these are operating assets and operating liabilities. Other long-term liabilities, so these are non-operating assets and non-operating uh, liabilities. Oftentimes, we can assume them to remain constant. Uh, what that means is we assume that the company is going to refinance them when they come due. So in order for us to make sure that um, we are internally consistent, uh, the change in the cash balance um, should agree with the change in the cash on the projected statement of cash of uh, cash flows. So that's another way that we can verify that. Now that you have a good understanding of the forecasting principle and the specifics, let's take a look at an example. In the first example, we're gonna do a forecast that is using the sales growth rate. So I call it the growth rate base forecast. Here are assumptions. Uh, we assume that revenue growth rate will stay the same. So stay the same as in the past. Gross profit margin growth rate will also stay the same. Infantry turnover will be the same as in year zero, so the most recent year. And we're going to forecast just a few items um, as a practice. We're going to forecast revenue in the next year, cost of goods sold next year, and ending infantry balance in next year. We're going to do this in Excel. So you, you um, please pause the video and you can um, open up Excel. I actually embedded the Excel worksheet into the PowerPoint here. So you can, you can actually double click and open out the Excel inside here and copy the information. So here are the information that was given. These are historic information. We cannot change that. These are facts. So this is uh, these are sales for the past two years, cost of goods sold for the past two years, and ending inventory. Uh, the assumption that we're given. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, when we do forecasting, of, um, you may want to round your calculation to specific decimal places. Uh, since this is a growth-based forecast, um, I, I, I typically uh, round um, percentages to four decimal places. And then for dollar values, I will round that to zero decimal places. So let me make sure I read that. So wrong um, growth rates. So see how I'm making all the assumptions, including my rounding assumptions, listed out so that it's clear um, how each um, each variable is calculated. Uh, so the assumption we were given was that we we assume that sales revenue will grow at the same rate. So we need to compute this revenue growth rate. So remember, revenue uh, growth rate is new. So year zero is the most recent year divided by old. So that's year one minus one. So right now, this is not rounded. So to make sure that I round this, um, I use the round function in Excel. And I'm going to round these to four decimal places. And I reference what I put in here. And you'll notice the advantage of that is if you, later on you want to change this, for example, you want to change the rounding to two decimal places, you simply change your assumption and your forecast will change automatically. In addition to sales growth rate, we also assume that gross margin as well as cost of goods sold will also grow. Um, at the same rate. So the cost of goods sold growth rate is again new minus old, my, my, new divided by old 
minus 1. And we'll want this also to four decimal places. So that's the cost of goods sold growth rate. We also have inventory turnover. We assume that inventory turnover is the same as in, as in year zero. So we need to compute that as well. So inventory turnover is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So average inventory is the sum of the two. divided by two. So I'm used to creating my formula by uh, selecting the existing cell so I can highlight and see uh, what my calculation is. Remember I talk about checking and validating this. So before I include the rounding, I make sure that the base calculation is correct first. And we are rounding it to four decimal places. So that is our turnover. So now we have computed our assumption. So we're going to do our forecast based on the sales growth rate, the cost of goods sold growth rate, and also uh, inventory. What we are asked to forecast is projected sales revenue, uh, projected cost of goods sold, and projected ending inventory. But we have to do one step first. We have to first compute the average inventory, and then we can compute the ending inventory. Since we already computed the growth rate to project next year's revenue is relatively straightforward. Um, we take the most recent revenue, so in year zero times one plus, the growth rate, so we computed the growth rate, that will give us um, projected sales revenue. And remember that we want to round these to zero decimal places because we are rounding all dollar value to zero decimal places. Once again, you can change that. You may want to round it to two decimal places to include dollars and cents, and you can do that quite easily. Next, we're going to project cost of goods sold. Uh, since we assume the growth rate is the same, we use the same strategy. We take the most recent cost of goods sold times 1 plus the growth rate for cost of goods sold. And once again, we can round that to zero decimal places. Now we can project future inventory. The reason we have to first compute average inventory is because we are going to project it using inventory turnover. And since inventory turnover is defined as so that's inventory turnover is equal to cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So to find average inventory, we have to swap the two. So average inventory is equal to cost of goods sold divided by inventory turnover. So we can put that in. So projected average inventory is equal to our projected cost of goods sold divided by inventory turnover. So that's uh, once again, we can round this to, this is a dollar value, so we round it to zero decimal places. Once we have average inventory, we can find the ending inventory. Um, so Ending inventory is average inventory times two minus the period's ending inventory. And once again, we can round this to zero decimal places. And we can 
format this so that these are dollar value. And this example, we conclude the example here where we um, forecast sales revenue, cost of goods sold, and ending inventory based on the growth rate. Next to another example. In this example, we're going to do the forecast based on the number of stores. So uh, these are the historic information. Um, in the year before, we have 2,269 stores. And last year, we have 2,274 stores. So you can see that we added five more stores um, the most, in the most recent year. The assumption for our forecast is that we will add 10 more new stores and then each store will be open for an average of half year in the, in the, in the coming year. So what that means is um, we'll need to use average between uh, this year and the next year. We assume that in existing store there will be no growth, so meaning that the average revenue per store remains the same. Uh, so all the growth will come from new store opening. Uh, capital spending per new store will remain the same as in year zero. And the ending inventory per store will also stay the same as the most current year. So these are our assumptions. So you may want to take a minute to write this down. And you'll see how we translate that into uh, Excel in a minute. What we're going to forecast is similar. We're going to forecast sales revenue. And we're also going to forecast capital spending and ending inventory. Similar to the last example, you can open this up and copy all the information into Excel. Okay, these are um, the assumptions. These are the historic data that we were given. So this is what happened um, two years ago, and this is the most recent year. Similar to what we've done before in the assumptions. So if you want, pause the video so that you can enter this in your, in your um, Excel so that you can follow along. All right, ready? Let's go. So uh, just like in the last example, we specified the, the rounding. In here, I'm rounding all the per store variables to four decimal places and rounding the, the uh, total value, the forecast value, to zero decimal places. So, so be very, very clear. Uh, but the, the other things, so these are given. We are told that the, there will be 10 new stores and the average operating time is half a year. We also know that sales growth in existing store is going to be 0%. Before we can do our forecast, we also need to um, compute the other assumptions because we're told that average revenue per store is going to remain the same. Because we assume that um, average opening uh, time for new stores is half a year, um, the average revenue per store is the sales revenue divided not by the total of store for that year, but rather the average number of stores. So we'll take the average. So we assume that every store is, the new stores are open only for half a year. So this is our average revenue. So we'll run this. So this is per store value. So we'll run these to four decimal places. Capital spending per new store. So um, capital spending we know is 1503. And the new store, how many new store were open? So we can subtract the difference. So from year zero to year minus one, we have five new stores. And the average cost per store is 300.6. So once again, this is a per store value. So we can run that. And then ending inventory per store in year zero. So notice that the ending inventory is a, uh, is a point in time. So this is how much inventory we're on hand. And this is the number of stores that's already opened 
um, in year zero. So here we don't need to worry about the average. This is just all year zero. So this is the number of inventory, the amount of inventory in each store. Um, so once again, we'll run this to the per store variable. Okay. So now we have all our assumptions. Next, we're going to do our forecast. So the number of store next year will be the most recent year's number of store plus the new store that will be opening. So we have 2284 stores altogether. Uh, sales revenue, we have average revenue per store, so we can just use that as our forecast. But remember our assumption, we assume that of the stores that were open, half um, the new store will only open operation for half a year. So when we forecast the revenue, we'll use average revenue per, per store, but multiply that by the average number of stores over the two years. This is a very common um, assumption. And once again, we can choose to run this or again, depending on both um, the economic significance of in times, uh, we're talking about millions of dollars. So rounding it to the total dollar will be, will be fine. Uh, the cost, the capital spending, um, we know the capital spending per store and we're opening up 10 store. So that's how much we expect to spend altogether. And ending inventory, again, ending inventory per store is 5.19. And at the end of the year, we'll have 2284 store altogether. So you can put in the rounding in here and then um, your forecast will be complete. Hopefully these two, two examples will give you a taste of how you can go about um, forecasting um, operating items for different types of businesses. We'll end the video here. In the next video, we're going to talk about project, uh, how can we project financial leverage, financial assets, equity, and also financial income and expenses. See you soon.